Hey guys, I haven't done a live for you guys in a while. Um, going to talk about love and dating. All things love and dating. Okay, hey, 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 hey. All right, you guys. I uh, had to let the dogs in. <laughs> It's always a big mistake when I try to let the dogs out right before I'm going to do something. I have my alcohol-free wine because I have stopped stopped the wine drinking in favor of the alcohol-free wine. So, okay, you guys, I'm here to talk about love and dating. You know, I've been a matchmaker since 2008. I specialize in working with the ultra-rich, uh, affluent men, but there is, the, I am not in the gold digger business. I'm not, I'm not in the sugar daddy business. I think some people get uh, confused <laughs> about that. Why? Because so many people are willing to compromise their integrity um, for money, but I'm not. I don't know. I've just been able to have this business since 2008, and I've lived in L.A. since 89, and I've managed to navigate my life with my integrity intact. Can you imagine that? <laughs> not easy. Not easy. Um, but I'm here today. Put on my makeup just for you guys. So if you have uh, dating questions, uh, any questions, you know, I'm here for it. I'm here to help you and answer questions. Now, the way it works around here, and this is my alcohol-free wine. Mm, and I found a really, really good brand, if anybody wants to know about it. Nobody's sponsoring it. Believe me, maybe they should or would if I told them I'm talking it up. But, um... So the way it works around here, I love to take your questions. You can ask me anything. Tell me your name, then tell me your question. Tell me your name, tell me your question. Because you know who I am, and I like to know who I am talking to, all right? So with that in mind, and I also stay as long as there's questions, you know? Um, you know, my for those of you who have written to me, um, oh, I will say, oh my God, I got the nicest while you guys are joining. I'll just tell you about the nicest email I got. Um, Oh, night before last from a, a girl. I don't know her. She wrote me the nice, you guys write me these emails like you know me. And hey, I appreciate that. Um, I try to keep everybody straight. This is why telling me your name or, or ways I might know you will help me remember. Uh, my brain isn't, isn't getting any younger. None of ours are, are, is. But anyway, she wrote me the nicest email and she said that, um, and I get things like this. I get letters from women that say they were in like abusive relationships and I empowered them and I'm teaching them how to raise their standards. And some have said that they have been um, like date raped before and sexual assault victims. The woman uh, the other night sent me a message and she said that she was a cancer survivor and she would felt frumpy and, and, you know, not hot. And she checked out my new Amazon store and you can get all the links from me in the, my bio link above. You just click that one stop shop and it'll lead you down the rabbit holes. But she said, I went to your Amazon store, Gina, and she said that I bought this red dress. And so she sent me a before, a frumpy before picture. And she sent me this so amazing souped up red dress version of herself. And she said, and you know, I don't even know if I'm ready to date yet, but I look amazing and I feel amazing. I'm like, hell yeah, you look amazing. And I'm so glad you feel amazing. I said, can I share this? And I said, I'll give you my free masterclass on men, my video series I have, or I'll do a free call or whatever. No, Gina, I don't need anything free from you. Can you believe it? All you greedy people. <laughs> Gina, give me some free. Gina set me up with a billionaire. Um, she was like, no, you've done enough for me. It was the nicest, nicest thing. And it just makes me feel good when I hear things like this. Okay, so let's get to questions. Uh, you got questions. I got answers. So tell me your name. Tell me your question. Let's do this. Okay. Uh, I'm going to scroll backwards here and see who's first. Hi. Okay. Buddy, no questions. First time here. Well, welcome, buddy. I'm glad you're here. If you're still here, hi, hi. Um, okay, somebody who did not tell me their name, um, unhindered. Um, I've been with my partner 11 years and he hasn't proposed yet. What do you think that means? Now, you're giggling as you say this, but here's the truth. We all, and collectively we, me, you, everybody, we all know the answers to everything. So you already know the answer to this question. You know what I would say. So, you know, I guess the question I have to you is why do you stick with it when I know that you know that uh, if it's been 11 years and, you know, you want, I'm assuming you want to get married because you're asking this, 
Maybe you don't. But if you're somebody who wants to get married and you've been with this dude for or your partner, or maybe a woman, I don't know, for 11 years. And, um, you know, if you especially if you want to get married and have kids, I don't know what the deal is. But if that's what you want, then you know 11 years is probably not going to happen. Honestly, what will end up happening is you guys break up and then one of you guys will get married right away to the next person that comes along. Usually that's what happens. Um, okay. Hi, Lisa from Canada. Hello, hello. Okay. Just spoke briefly to a guy on an app and he is new to the app two weeks. That doesn't really mean anything, honestly. Um, you know, it, it's, it doesn't mean anything. There could be men who get on the apps and their intention is to just play around and then there could be men on the apps and their intention is to be in a relationship. But I don't think just being on the new to the app necessarily has any bearing. I mean, in a way, maybe it's better to just scoop him up off the market before he realizes like it's a candy store. You know what I mean? Um, let's see. He wants to take... Oh, wait. So, no, there's more to this question. All right. He wants to take his time. What does that mean? Haven't met or Zoomed yet. Well, I mean, I think that... Okay, I think that you ladies get too invested in total strangers way too soon. I think that, you know, uh, you know, I think that what I teach women and tell women and, you know, is that you got to take it with a grain of salt. You should be swiping and not paying attention. You shouldn't even really be paying attention until like your third or fourth date with a guy. Like you should still be like, okay, back to my hobby of working out. Okay. Back to dealing with my dogs, back to my life until you're like on day four and then you go oh wait a minute you mean this guy has consistently showed up four times and he's like like doing everything right and keeps it okay now i'm paying attention now i'm invested that's when you care before then it's like swipe and swipe and talk to people and you know don't get invested until something becomes real and that takes time all right so yeah um hey kathy Will I ever find love? Everyone wants to hook up. Everyone wants to hook up. Um, okay, so I am not, I am intuitive, but I'm not a soothsayer. <laughs> I don't have my crystal ball. But, you know, the thing is, you. what do they say? You only lose by giving up, right? So all these people that tell me I've given up on the dating apps and um, there's no good men out there. Yeah, well, those people are not going to find anybody, not with that attitude, not with out, giving up on give, giving up on the search. That's how you lose. That's how you don't find them. But if you, but if you, you know, just like they say, like in the acting world, right? It's like the people who ultimately they you, or they win by just never giving up. They just keep at it, keep at it, and that's what I what you just got to do. You know, what's the other alternative, right? To give up, and then and then you're you're still in the same boat you're in. So you're still in the same boat if you give up except there's no hope versus staying in the boat and hoping and finding somebody, right? I hope that makes sense. All right. Um, ah, you are the best. Okay. Thank you. I am 32, a big lawyer, never married, no kids. What's a good age range for me? Um, well, I think you also have to tell me, okay, so I'm just going to remind you guys. I love it when you tell me your name. So I know who I'm talking to. Um, so I think that, Here's one thing that we will talk about, and I may have mentioned on one of my lives, I haven't done a TikTok about this, but it's like, have you frozen your eggs, right? So if you're a woman who can afford to freeze your eggs and you're a woman who's, you know, in your 30s, it, I talk to women all the time these days. I say one of my first questions is, have you frozen your eggs? Because if you can afford to do it, it's an insurance policy. And honestly, as you get 35, 36, and especially if you're on the dating apps and you meet a guy and a lot of you ladies want men around your own age, if you're able to tell them you've frozen your eggs, that makes them feel a lot better, like there's no rush involved. Otherwise, a lot of guys tell me, you know, when they're in their late 30s, early 40s, they, don't, they want to date women much younger, you know, like late 20s, early 30s, because they just, it's because of the time clock on the baby. So for your, in your case, you know, if you're looking to start a family, you know, you want to find a guy who's who's at the same place where you are in life. And if you're in the Midwest, that can be younger. If you're in L.A., that could be older. You know what I mean? So it also matters where you're located. Um, OK, cool. So my fiance is always playing games with me. Recently, she said, I think it's better you go out. You go without me. Um. 
well, then, well, why? I don't, I'm, I'm like, blah, 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 what? Well, why, why are you with her unless you like these games? So if you like the games, more power to you guys. But if you don't like the games, then why is she still your fiance? Right? You only live once. So why are you going to, why are you going to sit around and put up with a bunch of bullshit? Um, cool. So, okay. Anybody else have questions? I'll be here as long as you got questions. You got questions, I got answers. But if you do have a question, tell me your name and tell me your question, all right? Because I know a lot of you have questions all the time. <laughs> and if you don't, you know, then I'm just going to go make dinner and, you know, hang out with the dogs. Freezing my eggs next month, actually. See, I know what I'm talking about, don't I? Um, so you live in Wichita, where there are no professional men. Best me way to meet men in other cities? Well, so you know what? I actually just, I have this talk with a lot of ladies on a regular basis when you guys book calls with me or my coaching or whatever it is. And I, um, I always, you know, say if you can live other places, then I recommend going on Bumble and putting it in travel mode. Tonight, you could be dating in Nashville. Tonight, you could be dating in New York from the comfort of your couch in Wichita. <laughs> you know, you could be dating in Canada. You could be dating in Hawaii. You could be dating in Los Angeles, San Francisco, right? But the key to it, and I will tell you guys the key to this, give you a little inside tip here from me to you, um, is that what you have to do if you're going to do travel mode and I do think it's a great thing to do, but you have to put in your bio um, something to the effect, and you got to make it, you know, applicable to you. But I would put at the very top, so it's one of the first things I see is, you know, um, I'm in a place, in, I'm in a great place in life where I could live anywhere, looking for, you know, my next great adventure, or I'm looking to relocate, uh, checking out my options, something like that. Because here's what happens when you go in travel mode, you're going to. Two different types of guys, right? The one guy that just wants to play around and thinks you're thinks you're passing through, you'll be attractive to him because he'll be like, oh, good. We'll have a little fun while she's here. But the guy that's seriously looking for a real relationship, he will skip over you because he thinks, eh, she's just passing through. What's the potential of this going anywhere? All right? So if you're going to do travel mode, you have to put some simple little sentence in the very beginning that explains why you're in travel mode. Okay? Um, I talk about recipes and food in the beginning. Okay, well, that that's not going to get you very far. <laughs> you need to fix that. Uh, I am sure Sue from London. Oh, okay. Hey, Sue from London. I'm 52. Can you recommend an app for me? Now, I will say Bumble should have me on the payroll. <laughs> as much as I talk about Bumble, and I am not on the payroll. I do. I do not have any affiliation with Bumble. But, you know, I went round and round with a girl today who had a call with me, private, she, you know, scheduled a call with me and went round and round because I kept routing her back to Bumble. And she kept saying, but are there any private dating apps? Are there any, you know, and the thing is like, I, I'm an expert at this. I eat, sleep and breathe this. I've been studying it forever. I keep up with what's going on. I, I have helped so many women get their money back from them hiring so-called like matchmaking services like Talkify, which is absolute garbage and trying to. So I literally am having conversations with people on a daily basis. And I can tell you with 100% certainty, no matter what age you are, um, Bumble is where everybody is. And there are affluent men on Bumble. I've had one of my movie stars was on Bumble for a while. And I was like, get off Bumble. What are you doing? Um, and, and then, you know, some of my extremely ultra rich guys have been on Bumble. And so all roads lead to Bumble. Why? Because everybody's on Bumble. You know what I mean? It's sort of like the party everybody ends up showing up to at some point or another. Um, so yeah, I mean, I can't say those guys are going to stay on there forever, but they are on there. And now if you, okay, I'm going to tell you an exception. If you are in small town America somewhere where you're in the middle of nowhere yeah, well, maybe the guys are not on Bumble. Maybe they're a little out of touch and they're doing Match.com. <laughs> so in that case, just do a little, little looking. Um, but the but the key is getting on dating apps. It's the it's the super highway of dating. It's the dating Olympics because everybody's competing for the very best person. So if you show up on the dating apps and your profile is not good and click, if you look, go to that link in my uh, TikTok at the top. You know, I've organized a couple things. One is called profile makeovers. And you can see some of the profile makeovers that I've done. 
Now I am not publicly, I don't even have that link active anymore. I'm not even publicly offering profile makeovers right now because it's a lot of work for me. It's, it's way harder than I make it look. I make it look easy and I am great at it, but it's time consuming for me if it's going to be done right. But you can see just for yourself so that you know what the bar is set at. So, you know, if you're going on the dating apps, you cannot have some haphazard dating profile where your friends or family might approve. <laughs> that does not translate to dating. Dating, if you want the best men or people, whatever you're into, um, you have to show up and stand out and, and like have curated photos that actually make the guy go, holy shit, she's better than all the other ladies I've been seeing who are like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if you're going to be on the dating apps, you better bring your A-game. That's the bottom line. All right. Convos go flat on Bumble and most men don't take initiative to ask you out. Well, here's the thing. Who gives a shit about most men? Then you're not working Bumble right. All right. The way to work the apps, Bumble included, is you wait you're pre-qualifying hard in the beginning, so you're only swiping on the men. You're not swiping on everybody. You're in the beginning to test your profile, maybe. But once you get it dialed down, you're only swiping on the men who match everything you're looking for, all right? And the details matter. And then you're only waiting for those guys to extend the time. And if you match with 10 men and only two extend the time, those are the only two that you should have in play. You shouldn't be talking to a bunch of jackasses just because you matched with them, because matching means nothing. This is why you end up low level conversations because those guys weren't hot from you for you from the beginning. They're just swiping like a bunch of mindless idiots most of the time. But those men that extend the time, those are men who have said, oh my God, her profile is great. I am hot for her. Hang on. I'm extending the time. All right. And those men should definitely show up excited and, and have things to say. But you know what? You also have to take responsibility. You have, it's a two part conversation, right? So he might show up and maybe he doesn't know know what to say. You got to toss him a bone. If you toss him a bone, hopefully if he is genuinely interested, he'll make interesting conversation. But those men that aren't making interesting conversation, it's only because they're not that interested in you, all right? If they were, trust me, they'd be they'd be dancing as fast as they could to keep you entertained, okay? Um, and then it just comes back to maybe your profile's not that great. So they match with you, but it doesn't mean anything. Matches mean nothing. It's the men who actually act excited. That's how you know you have a great profile. All right. Um, what are some good combo starters? Well, I mean, it, it, it should be applicable and specific to each individual person. All right. This is why in your bio, you want to be unique. You want to you wanna paint a picture of exactly who you are and what makes you unique and the type of unique person you're looking for, all right? And then when they have a bio, you want to look at what, why, why did you swipe on them, right? So use the reasons you swiped on them to create the conversation, right? And get it going. Now, hopefully it's a two-way street. I talk about this in my book, The Great Manhunt. You know, I lay out all these strategies and formulas for you because, you know, it should be like a tennis match. Answer a question ask a question, ask a question, answer a question. But like somebody's asking you a question and you answer and you give them nothing back at all. Oh, I had a great weekend. I did this and I did this. And you answer the question, but you're giving them nothing back. Where is it supposed to go? <laughs> Crash and burn. All right. Um, da, 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 da. Have a nice day. Love Bumble. Uh, I ask about pets. Oh yeah, pets are always good. <laughs> if you've got if you've got pets, it's always good. Um, if you're not clear, like somebody's not clear about, you know, um, you know, I also recommend on on Bumble. Uh, I'm the broken record of Bumble um, that you only swipe on those men who have occupations listed. I've had women test and try this, and they come back and they go, Gina. We tried your theory and you are right. Now, maybe there's an exception once in a while, but honestly, for the most part, the men that don't put occupations, usually when you scroll down and you look at the rest, they put they're looking for something casual because a man who is authentic, a man who is legit, a man who's got his life together and he's proud of what he does and he shows up on the apps looking for somebody who's also at his level and a legit, he's going to put in all the legitimate details. He's going to put in his occupation. All right. So, you know, you ask questions about that, but if for some reason you've matched with a guy and you're not even sure what he does, ask him. If you're not sure if he wants kids and you do, ask him. 
You need to be pre-qualifying for yourself because nobody's looking out for you on the apps except you. And so this is why asking the right questions and not being afraid to say it is so important, okay? Um, then your then Fred, is it Fred? Freddie the bully. Freddie the bully, that sounds so scary. Oh, oh, you're Alicia. So I don't get Freddie the bully. Okay, I'll, well, I don't even know what that means, but okay, Alicia, I'm 53 and I just want to meet someone. I don't ever get past how are you? Well, then it's your profile. I guarantee you, because honestly, 99.999 of the profiles I see are, are, are profiles that I would never approve of <laughs> because my standards are very high, right? Because you can't show up. Like I know how competitive the dating apps are. I know what men tell me. And you don't have to be a supermodel, but you have to have carefully curated pictures. It can't be, oh, I thought it was cute in my backyard today. I thought it was cute in my car with my seatbelt across my shoulder and not the best lighting or like, that doesn't fly. It flies if you want average, low-level results from average, low-level men, sure. But if you want, like, an amazing connection with amazing man, man then it only makes sense to show up amazing, right? All right. Um, do, 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 do. Who else has got something for me? Uh, da, 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 da. Combos go flat. I, I live in a very, I live in very red politics area. I'm a little feminist and lean left. Am I doomed? So can you move? Can you move? Um, oh, by the way, you know what? For anybody that knows Grant Cardone, I ran into Grant Cardone on Sunday at the beach in Malibu. I love Grant Cardone. I didn't do, I was going to do a TikTok about it. And then I thought, mm, maybe that's not cool. So I posted the video and then I took the video down. But like, I recommend you know, and the, and the reason I'm even mentioning Grant Cardone, A, is because I met him, but also because his strategies and theories, and although he, he is more of like bro, a little bit more of like bro culture, although his wife's in on the business now, but I like his stuff. Um, but he talks about how, you know, basically if you want to improve your life, you got to 10x it, right? That's his whole thing. So if you're showing up on the dating apps, low level, you're going to get low level results. If you're, if you're somewhere where you're not meeting the best people, you're going to, you know, you got to 10x it, baby. This is the only life we get. So if you can move, move. If you can't, at least go in travel mode and look and try to find somebody, but you got to make it clear, hey, guess what, dude? You got to come to me. It's just going to be a lot harder. But I would say when people tell me, like, there's no good people in my area, I'd say pick your ass up and figure out a way to move, okay? That's the answer. I can't bring, I can't bust better men into your area, all right? So anyway, yes, I saw Grant Cardone. He and his lovely family and his girls were playing with my dogs and they were sweet, well-behaved little, little young ladies. And I just love Grant Cardone. I was like, he's like, this is the first question everybody asks me when they see me because I'm always with my dogs. I'm like the eccentric kook who's always has four dogs in tow. Uh, and it was five before my other one passed away in March. And then it was six before then. Um, they always say, are you a dog walker? Um, because I think, you know, they're trying to pre-qualify me as potential dog walker for themselves. And, uh, and so Grant, it's no different. He said, are you a dog walker? And he was on his balcony up high at his house. And I was down on the sand. Uh, and I was like, uh, no, not, not a dog walker. They're mine. And he said, oh, and I said, and you're Grant Cardone. Oh my God. Okay. So I just had to share that fan moment with you. And he was so nice. And his girls played with the dogs and we ended up talking. And then finally I was waiting for it. He said, what do you do? And I said, oh, I'm a matchmaker for billionaires. And you would have thought I would have said I work for the IRS or I was a proctologist because it was like <laughs> so awkward. But, uh, I just, I just kept right on talking and it was, it was fine. But yeah, that, that made it a, a mildly awkward. Okay. Canada. Okay. I live. Okay. If, okay. Whoop, 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 whoop. Uh, if food, pets, no starters, what do you suggest? If recipes, food, pets are not, you know, here's the thing. I already answered that. I said, you got to make it. You can't be the person that shows up with your topics to talk about. Because it's not genuine, it's not authentic, it's not going to feel real. you got to be a real human, right? You, like, this is the, how I roll. I mean, granted, I am a talker. But um, but you've got to be able to just be in the moment with somebody. you got to be able to read their bio 
I mean, why are you even swiping on somebody if you don't think they have things in their bio that resonate with you that you could at least start a conversation about, right? Nobody should be matching with anybody if there's not something in this person's bio that gives you something to talk about with them. You should be finding them interesting. Oh, I can't wait to talk to them about my hair is so weird right now. Um, and I'm growing out my bangs. I'm going through a very weird hair stage. Um, <laughs> but oh well, it is what it is. Um, so that's the thing. Why are you even matching with anybody if you're not like excited to talk to them about something you've read in their bio? That should be your first clue whether you should match with them or not, right? Um, ba, 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 ba. Okay, so you guys, um, I don't think I have any more questions here. I don't think. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Short and sweet. I haven't done a, a new video lately, so I figured I would make up for it in a live TikTok. Surprise! Um, but I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Oh, it says 30 new messages. Wait, no. No, Bumble is free. Thank you. Correct. Bumble is free. And you know what's funny? I've even helped women set up their profiles before, and I've like been there with them because there's a way you can connect your phone to the Zoom. So I'm doing Zoom with the, these ladies and I'm seeing their dating app and I'm literally setting it up with them and they go, see, you've got to pay. And I'm like, no, that is a trick. Bumble is constantly trying to upsell you. I think all dating apps are, but it's a trick. Like they blur out people's photos. Don't you want to see who likes you? No, who gives a shit who likes you? Just do it for free and swipe. Yes, if you want to do travel mode, that is premium. Absolutely. Um, but you know, listen, you got to pay to play, right? You want everything for free? You know, you want ba better access to better men? You got to pay to play, you know? Uh, so then you're doing something wrong on Bumble. <laughs> if Bumble's charging you, it's because you accidentally signed up and you didn't know what you were doing. But Bumble is, Bumble is 100% free. I've been doing this for years. I've been helping women for years. I know the inside and the outside and the backward and forward of Bumble. All right. Um, well, I mean, okay, why do guys run away when they see my Mercedes? I make good money. Why should I feel? Here's the thing. That might not be the reason they run away. That might be what you tell yourself, but it might be your person. I hate to say this. It might be your personality. It might be something else, but it's not your car. <laughs> it is not your car. It could be the men you're choosing. It could be your personality. It could be a lot of things, but it is not your car. All right. So let's see here. Uh, do you have single clients in North? I have clients all over the world. All right. I have men who have homes a lot of times in other places. It goes in phases. Sometimes I go through phases, clients are just in LA, but usually they have homes other places. Then I have clients sometimes in other countries. It just varies, it ebbs and flows. But thing about me is I only work with seven to eight clients, all right? Sometimes even less because I don't have to work with everybody. I charge a lot. I work with just a few guys that I love and I'm proud to represent and it's a nice, easy breezy business. And then I can you know, make these TikTok videos. It gives me time to do that stuff and coach my ladies. All right. Um, oh, I have, I have too many women to count on my database. I have thousands upon thousands of thousands. I've been doing this since 2008. Um, how often should they reach out when newly dating? I mean, I think, uh, in the first, like, I mean, it depends. It varies, but I mean, I, I would be fine with a guy just sort of uh, going out on a first date with a guy that was really great and then saying, Hey, let's, let's do it again and making a plan, hopefully for a second date and then touching base a day before the date. Hey, looking forward to seeing you just reconfirming for Thursday night. That should be good enough for the first two to three dates. Then after the third date, things should be cooking a little more. So you've known each other better. So now there's more to talk about. So then he should be reaching out a little more often. You know what I mean? Just a normal pace, right? A normal buildup. I don't like people that go from zero to 100. Went out on one date and I'm texting you, good morning, good night, good morning, good night. It's like, well, that's just too much, too soon. And I don't even think it's real. Don't even know if you like me yet. Um, I'm meant to be shown to clients then. Uh, yes, chances are very slim unless you fit what my guy's looking for. I don't, ha I don't make those decisions. I follow the instructions of my clients. My clients are extremely, extremely particular. I have women who've been in my database for three, four years, and then all of a sudden the right client comes along, and boom, if I catch her and now she's single, or maybe she's not single, oh well, but then she says, oh, Gina, hang on, I am single, great. 
boom, set them up. And then I've had this happen. And then they get into a relationship. The, uh, somebody actually that I'd known for years, I'd set her up with a few clients. I hadn't talked to her in a couple years. I get another client and she currently was single and boom, now they're st they've been together now, I think five years. He bought a house for them. I don't know that marriage is their goal. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I have that. Every any good matchmaker is going to have thousands and thousands of women in their database. But it's ultimately you have to follow the lead of the client. And if you imagine, I work with men that are like Elon Musk or Bradley Cooper or these kinds of men. Not saying those guys are my clients because those guys are not my clients, but guys like them. Guys at the level, guys in the same industry, guys you would know and recognize, those guys are so specific and particular about who the women that I'm going to find for them, right? So there you go. Um, then, then it's your profile. If you're not connecting with guys that you find attractive on the dating apps, it is your profile, it is your profile, it is your profile. All right, guys? So um, I work with people all over the world. I work with people all over the world. All right, so that's it. So if you want to go up to the link, you can check out my new Amazon store. I picked out some cool looks for ladies so that you can get some good date looks, fix your profile, fix yourself up. Um, and Or you can book a call with me and get my books. Whatever you need, I got you covered. All right, so I'm going to sign off now, but uh, I really, really appreciate it. I'm cheersing with my non-alcoholic wine. So if you're trying to stop drinking, I recommend... Um, trying some non-alcoholic wine experiment. I'm not being paid to talk about non-alcoholic wine. I'm just, uh, I'm into it right now and I'm enjoying it. I like having my head on straight and not getting on TikTok all fucked up because <laughs> that's done that once and I'll never do that again. That was a really, really bad decision on Halloween. Anyway. All right, guys. Well, if you ever want to email me, you can always reach me at team Gina at Gina Hendricks.com. And I love doing this and I love helping you guys. All right. So thank you. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. See you later.